So we've got some real special artists here. Uh, I view them as rangatai artists, but you know, um, they've been around a while now doing mahi toi, and um, they're always busy. So these two I'm always seeing on Facebook and, and social media and doing all sorts of amazing stuff. So they, their time is very precious. And thank you, Miriam and Poi, for coming today and um, sharing your kōrero with us. I really appreciate it. Um, so I think we'll just get straight into business because uh, time is precious. And I'd just like to introduce Miriam Grace Smith. So Miriam is Ngāti Hau, Ngāti Manyapoto, Ngāti Tuarangatira, and Ngāti Porau. Uh, she's based in Wellington, in the Wellington region, and she's a full-time artist. Uh, she's also an actress, and I saw you, Miriam, on, um, <laughs> <laughs> on, on this crowd scene. I was like, hey! <laughs> so it's really cool. Um, and her mum's pretty well known too, but I'll leave that up to her to call it all about. Uh, so... She's a creator in all sorts of different ways, okay? She's a muralist, an illustrator, a fashion designer, a film costume artist, and art director. So pretty much I've seen her do all sorts of things. And this real exciting project more recently as well, she was on an ad for, was it Volkswagen? Um, for Mini. Oh, Mini, sorry, for Mini. So um, yeah, it's just so awesome to have you, Miriama, and I'll just pass the quarter over to you. We'd just really love to hear, you know, about your mahi, your process, what inspires you, or really anything that you want to share today. So tēnā koe hoa. Awesome. Um, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm stoked to um, be here today. Um, yeah, um, a bit about my mahi. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll call myself a multimedia artist. Um, I feel like I like... Um, I, I realized as I um, carried on with my mahi throughout the years that I like to do work on multiple kind of mediums. Um, I'm not too sure why, but I find that if I, um, I work on one medium for too long, I get a bit, um, bit kind of uh, maybe bored. Like it's, it's quite good for my brain to keep active um, if I'm working on um, different, different mediums. Um, at the moment, I've been finding that I, so I started, I started, um, I studied um, at um, Messi doing fine arts, and then when I finished up at Messi, um, I wasn't really too sure how, um, what I was going to do afterwards, and I actually went into um, fashion after Messi, and um, then went on to, um, to, um, uh, starting my own clothing label called Foresight Clothing and I um, had two shops, um, one in Paikikiriki where I grew up and um, then on Cuba Street um, where I sold um, streetwear and um, we also sold um, other artworks and um, clothing, like underground clothing labels from other artists in Wellington. Um, so that's, that's where I kind of started, I feel like, um, where I was kind of working out what I was wanted to do within my art and then after that I decided I wanted to um, carry on with um, painting and um, also also enjoy printmaking. Um, I think I started uh, really putting more time into my art process probably around then and um, now I seem to be doing more mural mahi um, more public art, which has been really fun. Um, still new to it, I feel. Um, love learning every time I am creating a new, new mural or working on a new mur mural. Um, yeah. 
Awesome, Miriama. Shall we show some images of your work? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, we've just got Dorothy, she's on tech, and she'll just um, bring up some images. Kapai dot? Yeah, here we go. So if you just want to talk to your work. Um... Um, yeah, cool. Okay, so this piece here is a um, Dream Girls Collective mural that we've painted on Tory Street, just in front of um, Reading Cinemas. We painted this piece um, around, I think it was before December last year. Um, so I'm part of a collective called Dream Girls Collective, and um, it's um, we are three wahine. Um, there's myself, Gina Kill, and um, Zoe Hall. And um, we started collaborating probably about two years ago now we've been a collective and we just vibed really well um creating murals is basically what we um focus on the most um we also do other um like design mahi as well together and um a lot of the works we create kind of um yeah i enjoy the process with the girls it's like um i've never been able to uh, they're probably the first artists I've vibed with, with where it's um, the process has been really easy and um, we seem to um, vibe on a lot of different levels um, creatively, which has been cool. And that's just a selfie. <laughs> uh, this piece um, I created last December for Massey Uni for the reception, the student reception area. Um, I really enjoyed this piece because um, I was able to, I enjoyed the process of trying to bring together the stories of the um, whenua where Massey sits on in Wellington. Um, so yeah, it was quite a process being able to um, look at um, the whakapapa of the whenua and um, ways I could um, tell those stories in um, one piece was um, quite interesting. I learned a lot from um, the process. What are some of the key stories in there? Um, so I was wanting to, I was wanting to um, like find a way to weave all the difference because um so on uh the stories of Pukiahu um Mount Cook um because there's a lot of um amazing stories of that area but then there's also um stories to do with um you know the old prison being there so a lot of mamai as well um so I was trying to find a way that I could weave both stories together so it's um you know you're acknowledging not just the good things you're also acknowledging um the not so good things and um, finding a way to bring those, weave those stories together where it kind of um, restores some balance uh, on in the area. Yeah. Um, and this is another um, Dream Girls um, collab that we did for an exhibition that we had at Hunters and Collectors last year. Uh, this one is a recent mural that um, this was also a, um, there was myself, Gina Kill and um, Tian um, Tway, and we each did a wall each and then um, found a way to kind of weave each of our um, murals together. Um, each um, mural kind of with tells our own stories to do with um, where they're situated um, in the opening of the uh, management school at um, Waikato Uni. And this one is a um, hoodie design that I um, designed recently. Um, and this one is about the, um, the, the word utu. So um, a yeah, I kind of had in my mind after doing the Massey mural that I wanted to create a hoodie, a hoodie that had um, Utu on the front. And I'm um, trying to, um, when I created the Massey mural, I asked my brother what a good name would be for the mural that has to do with balance. And he said Utu. 
And um, when he told me that name, he said, but, you know, these days people kind of um, look at that name like it um, has to do with revenge because of how it's been. Um, that's the, they kind of see that, that being the only meaning behind the word when it actually has to do with um, balance. So um, that kind of um, left a thought in my head and I thought it'd be quite cool to create a uh, hoodie design that um, kind of brought back that meaning, that part of um, the word, the um, kapu. Um, and these, I um, collab with a brand called, uh, New Zealand brand called Moana Road. Um, so I do a few different um, designs with them. And this is one of my, um, my um, tote bag designs. And then behind um, each design has a little meaning behind um, the work. Uh, and this one, was, <laughs> this one was a mural that um, I cre created with my friend Holly Rock. She's an amazing um, muralist, street artist. Um, and we created this one for a um, exhibition called Here and Out, which was on at Bunaki. And um, there were nine street artists, wahine from around the world that exhibited mahi there. Um, and we did this one when we did, I think we did that like probably like not very long ago. Yeah, had to paint in the rain. <laughs> And this one was a work that I had in the exhibition. Um, everyone had a piece of um, a work in the exhibition called Here and Out. Uh, this one was for a, um, this was a, an event that was at Brito Mart, which was, um, people could um, koha, put a koha in for um, native um, plants that they were giving out that people could take home and plant in their gardens. And this is another um, Dream Girls collab piece we did for the exhibition here and out. Um, this was a design I did for um, 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 mini. So this was put onto a um, mini rooftop. And um, the idea was that we had to work with was what was big love to us. And this for me was about um, the importance of um, having that um, sharing reciprocal energy, so um, not just taking from someone, but also um, giving back. That's the mini. I love the ad they did. Oh. <laughs> it's real cool. I've also, also seen you're on um, some music videos as well, Miriamma. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she just pop up all over the place. <laughs> Wonderful work, Miriama. Very strong, and you can really see uh, really grounded in Tao Māori as well. Your concepts. Uh, and your imagery, really powerful. Uh, thank you for sharing. And we'll come back to you shortly. Kapai? Yeah, cool. Yeah. And if there's anything else you want to share, then, um, you know, you're more than welcome. Um, but for now, we'll just pop over to Poi. Awesome. Tēnā koe hoa. <laughs> um, so I'd just like to introduce Poi Hākena Ngāwati. Uh, he does have an alias. Are we allowed to share that alias? 
Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> um, ticks, ticks. 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 Yep. Oh, cool. And, ticks. Uh, so if you uh, see ticks on um, any um, murals around around Aotearoa or even overseas, um, yep, this is your man. Uh, Poi hakina ngawati, no ngati hine, no ngapuhi, no tainui. Uh, and um, I'd say, Poi, you've got a pretty unique style. Uh, and um, your mahi, actually, one of your pieces is my favorite mur mural work. So, um, you know, there's a lot of amazing murals out there. Uh, but there's just one, you know, when you see artwork often and your work's like that too, Miriam, it just moves you. You know, you're like, oh. Um, but with your mahi poi, often you pull everything right back and you just have like a, it's a simple image, but it's very profound. Um, and that's what I see in your mahi and really grounded in tau Māori as well, you know, but bring in this real mana. Um, so kia ora poi, welcome and lovely to have you here today. And I'll just pass the mic straight over to you um, and you can share your mahi and call it all. Take us on a journey. Oh boy. Uh, you um, um, so uh, my alias is uh, Tex, or uh, X is my tohu. Um, my tupuna Kawiti, who signed, when he signed the treaty, well, when he got forced to sign the treaty, his tohu was uh, X on um, on the pepper. So uh, I sort of took that and ran with it and um, created a, a, a ingoa that has uh, the side of me and then also acknowledging my tupuna before me uh, with the tohu X. So instead of text, I just used to go along and sign my paintings uh, X. And uh, you can see them in the uh, majority of my paintings. I would hide a, a tohu of an X somewhere hidden in the detail of the work. So yeah, if you ever get a chance to look at uh, some of my paintings, um, uh, I encourage you to try and find the the tohu <laughs> in the in the paintings. Uh, yes, yeah, so humble beginnings. I uh, started off with uh, just a pencil uh, back in high school. Um, started uh, uh, illustrations from Goku through to Street Fighter characters. Just you know the usual that a uh, High school boy would be drawing uh, the muscle bound men and, and uh, big fireballs and all that. Um, and then my brother in law, uh, Checks One, he um, was an active graffiti artist at the time. He seen my mahi and he wanted to uh, give me another tool of destruction uh, to my arsenal. So he got me off the papers and gave me a spray can to try. Uh, at the age of 14, I believe. And uh, from there, got to try a first mural project with him. Um, it was on a garage door, still up at the moment, actually. I was, I've got a photo of it. Um, but I just need to put it up on my website, actually. Um, and that was my first production I've ever done before. And basically, he was just showing me how to um, apply technical application to um, paintings. So how to use the spray cans, how to use the different types of caps, um, how to get the thin lines, the fat lines, the drips, and all that. And um, that was part of my stepping stone to becoming a, a graffiti artist and then moving from graffiti artist and transitioning into... Uh, just mahi toy for neural work. Um, my main drive for um, my mahi toy is uh, taku papa. Um, 
my genealogy, my heritage, uh, te ao Māori, um, tangata whenua, all of these words, these words that drive me to um, be a better artist and get our pūrāko, our stories out there for everyone to tell and to show our next generations um, uh, the knowledge of our ancestors and, the, and what they used to do before we were here and how life could be um, in regards to being following maramataka, following traditional navigation, um, et so um, yeah, koe nga toku, toku um, timatanga. Um, awesome bro, do you want to show us some of your mahi? Right. So, you can talk uh, to some of those concepts in your images. And they took a website, um, manuxgraphics.com. Uh, I was <laughs> um, studied graphic design after high school, so I transferred my uh, mahi toy skills into a digital format. Koi, and, uh, Koi we can't website. see your images. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, cover. Here we go. Mm, still nothing. Oh yeah, here we go. Cool. We can see it. Mean bro. Oh, so here's the website I created myself. Um. So again, uh, I was uh, transferring my skills from spray can to the keyboard and mouse, um, just to better myself as an artist, you know, you get kind of bored just using the same tools after a while. So trying something else is a, another challenge. And um, yes, so in here, you've got some of my, uh, caught it all about me being an artist. Um, pretty much what I've just explained before. Um, here's a mural video to the left of a uh, painting down tower. I uh, painted this in 2015. Yeah. And this one talks about uh, a personification of a uh, bird sanctuary. So you have this tohunga here, who's looking after the manu. And um, this talks to the bird sanctuary that's located up into the hills that's looking after all our manu. And um, because the numbers of manu native manu uh, are thriving there in Tawa, so I wanted to uh, meet to that and paint a mural that depicts that and reminds everyone that, you know, these are our, these are our tongue and we have to look after them. Awesome. Uh, part of uh, being a digital designer as well is <laughs> marketing, so using your skills to market um, products. So here's some examples of some <clears throat> some branding work, uh, identity work that I've been uh, privileged to work on. And um, cool. yeah, some interesting um, companies have approached me and asked me to design logos for um, for their company. Majority of them are Māori based companies and they believe that because I'm Māori and, and it's true, um, no, having a firm understanding of tikanga Māori uh, makes this the process of designing it from paper to final product um, was very easy and stress-free for them. So um, yeah, that's Ooh. Yeah, and um, I actually love doing doing our designs for our Māori clients because our Māori-based clients because 
Um, I believe we're better at telling the story than, uh, say, a mainstream company um, that just Google uh, koru or puhoro and then they start using that design and they don't really have an understanding of, uh, a deeper understanding of the meaning and meaning behind um, our designs and our mahi. So um, I encourage all our Māori design companies, our Māori companies, to uh, get in touch with a Māori design company. There is very few out there, but, you know, there is still companies out there that we can, that they can, including myself, they can produce uh, these designs for them. Awesome. Mm. Uh, I myself have been getting into recently um, designs for tihate, so getting um, cool. getting my mahi on some tihate and telling pūrāko that way, um, sharing uh, stories, uh, not necessarily pūrāko that that are um, existing, more of a um, puraka that I create um, to have uh, everyone that um, is ever wondering about a place, say um, uh, this story here, Hine Haurua, this talks about the Te Reringa Wairua, the Cape up far north, and it talks about that being a personification of uh, a giant tupuna that lives there in the water made of stone and uh, wood. And uh, on its shoulder, you can see the Pahutakawa tree that you can see when you do go up to the Cape, um, you'll see the Srako uh, and then the Purako behind that is the actual Purako of our, when you, Kofeturangi Te Akwe, um, your hiringa before that is to go up to Te Reringa Wairua and to dive through the tree and then through the roots and then through the roots into the water and back to Hawaii or back to our origins. And um, yeah, so that talks of, um, of that design, but it's also to get people back to their, back to their whakapapa, back to where they come from. Mm. And um, recently I had a friend that, had purchased one of these t-shirts and um, had taken a photo up uh, where this design was based on. And uh, I thought that was the, the strongest powerful message to me saying that, you know, look, this is um, actually getting people uh, to think about the design, not just wear it around. And it's to get them thinking about the design and um, the origins and the, the corridor behind it which is now leading me to design Norse t-shirts that um, they get people back to their waharoa or back to their marae or papakainga. And, and um, yeah, that's, that's basically um, the driving force for, for my mahi, for tiati, mahi tiati. And yeah, this is the where the real mahi is. The the illustrations. I, I, you know, this is the bread and butter for me. Um, I'd always uh, before any major designs or any concepts are made for murals. I always sit there with a pencil and a piece of paper, and I just roughly sketch out an idea of what I want. And um, the technology these days, <laughs> uh, the programs such as Procreate on your iPads, it's probably the best program I've ever used um, to, to, instead of a uh, piece of paper and a uh, uh, pencil to sketch ideas and um, it makes it real easier. Um, yeah, so again, I start off with the concepts on a piece of paper and then go from there to onto a digital format.
This is uh, to do with a friend of mine. His, he is one of my mentors for traditional navigation, um, Peter P. Smith. He's from Ngāti Kahanganu. Um, and this is to do for, uh, this is uh, Mahi to do with his star dome, his 360 star dome that uh, he takes Rangatahi in to teach him about stars, Ngā Whetu, um, and how we can use these stars to um, gain direction and navigate for, uh, from. And these are some concepts that instead of Greek mythology would have like a Taurus, like you would have a big bull, um, Pisces would have fish in the sky for um, his uh, teachings. It's all uh, uh, Māori names and uh, constellations for for his um, teachings. Oh, boy. and down to the mural art. So with the uh, Mamahi toy for mural, well, murals, um, I do it, I'm fortunate to do it alongside my uh, other half, Hanamaihi from Ngāti Whātua. And um, it's awesome to share this experience with her and um, paint murals that have the Purako um, and of the rohe that we painted. Um, this one's a Taurapa here located for Te Tuangaro here in Tāmaki. Uh, this Taurapa talks to um, the, the tūpuna that used to be here and the, what used to be residing there in the waterfront. Um, and this is the, another side of that um, diesel vent uh, located down um, downtown CBD. This one was a heavy mural down uh, Gisborne. Um, the focal point here is uh, Papa Mo Piailug, one of our talking master navigators located from uh, Micronesia. And um, this was alongside a street art festival called Seawalls. And it talks, uh, the, the purpose for Seawalls is to share awareness um, of our oceans and looking after our moana and um, the co-pop up behind this painting is um, being observant being uh, observant of our surroundings and what better than a master navigator observing the stars uh, the wind um, the moana and how we can live and prosper through um, the tohu that the Taiyo were giving us. So that was a real Tomaha um, painting to paint because he's, he's now passed on and um, his whole whakaro with um, his knowledge of um, traditional navigation was uh, never to hold on to that information and um, pass away with it, always to um, hand down to the next generations or the one that the ones that are wanting to learn um, was the main purpose of uh, getting the knowledge out there. And this is our karakia that we had for the closing of it. I like to do karakia before and after the paintings um, to fakato ourselves while we're painting. Um, uh, make sure that we're intact with our mana um, and make sure we're, we're safe for the whole 
um, journey, the whole hiding of the, the mural. Um, I think that's moving forward with um, oh, with our mana intact and making sure everyone's safe and including ourselves when we're painting. Um, and we're not to takahi on anyone or uh, belittle anyone with our mahi. So, and then here's me uh, <laughs> sharing the quarter all about the painting. This is another mural located in uh, Kirikiriroa. Um, this is for another street art festival, Boon Arts, uh, Boon Street Art Festival. Uh, this is where I met uh, Miriama. Oh, not this year, but um, oh, I met her this year, but not during this uh, mural. Um, and this here is uh, Turanga, Barclay Kerr. He is uh, one of the rangatira for Tani Uwaka, Tairi Tiki Tiki. And um, his guy had painted him looking down over our awa as a kaitiaki and he is the he has now been handed over the reins from his father before him, uh, Hotuoku. Um, and that's him located on his shoulder as a huia, and is in his ear guiding him the way and teaching him the ways of um, our tupuna and and then the <clears throat> the kupu next to it, kapu te ruha, ka hao te rangatahi, cast aside the, the old nets and make new ones for uh, the fishing grounds of uh, Uh This talks about um, the handing over of roles or titles and yes, that's uh, his father handing over the mantle to Tūranga. And that's all I had to work off. <laughs> and then again, I'll cut it here to make sure everyone's safe and everyone's... And also, uh, another reason why we do cut it here to, is to separate um, me or us from the painting. So same with uh, Mahi Whakairo, uh, to make sure that they've finished their mahi to actually finish it by severing the ties between you and that painting or you and that carving. Um, I believe that's a, an important thing because you always have this connection to it and you just feel like it's not finished or you can do better stuff to it or you can do this to it. Um, whereas the Skarakia makes sure that everyone knows and you including yourself that the um the, the mural is, is finished yeah and uh if you just go on this website you can see many more murals i still have to update them um but they all talk about our uh, buraco um Tangata Rongonui are famous ones among us. And um, yeah. Kapoi reads. Oh, that's awesome, Poi. Thank you. You've touched on so many different areas. Uh, you've shown your mahi is so, um, the scope is so huge. Uh, when we're looking at murals in particular, you know, both of you have presented your murals. Um, the um, It's really interesting to um, kind of get a gauge on what you go through as an artist when you're creating a mural. And it's cool to see, you know, those beginning sketches and how you collate those together. And then um, as the process goes along, so Miriama, you, you know, you're working in collaboration, or both of you are with Hana as well, Poi. Um, so that often brings in other aspects. Um, but the difference too with murals is that uh, it's not something you paint and you can hide away in your room. You know, you're exposed all the time when you're out there, exposed to the elements, exposed to uh, criticism even, or, you know, compliments 100%. of the community, because really that painting that you're painting, and it's, it's great you um, talked about that point, that karakia process, 
It's about severing the ties. It's about saying, okay, this is no longer mine. This is for mm. the community, you know, because you're actually painting for the community. And, and so often you see those artworks being embraced and actually people responding and saying, actually, that's my artwork, you know. I go past this every day and I actually relate to that now. That's a part of me and my journey and my, my life. Um, so, yeah, do you, to, do you both have anything to share about maybe things that have happened while you've been um, painting murals or some, some things that come to mind? Uh, yeah, I had a, um, many experiences of people coming up and um, sharing their whakaro about it. And the um, uh, majority of um, passerbyers and people that just walking by um, have an instant connection with it for some reason and um and that wasn't really that um like it wasn't planned by me to have an instant connection with people but sometimes it will remind them of their uh their koro or their queer and um how they feel um happier just seeing it and having that connection and and even though it's not painted about the um komatu, it's always that uh, initial capture and then and that experience of um, having them feeling that, that shock and uh, a good shock, not a bad shock. So um, yeah, uh, actually that, that's what motivates me to keep going. And I always give people their um, space to have their own uh, interpretation, uh, their own focado about the painting before I actually give them the, the cordial. Um, that's how, Mainly, I get the corridor at the end is sometimes uh, corridor like that where um, they get reminded, and then I'll add that into the corridor of the whole painting. And um, yeah, it's, it's definitely that's what drives me to be a more better artist and getting the stories out there. That's it, Poye. It um, makes you more aware um, of how you're how you're working and uh, the stories you're putting out. What about you, Miriamma? What are some of your experiences? Um, yeah, I've always, um, yeah, there's definitely, a, uh, I definitely get a, I would say a big high from um, people's reactions sometimes. Um, um, one experience that I really loved was um, when we had created um, Dream Girls, we created a um, the mural on Tory Street and we had just come out of lockdown um and it, uh, it was one of those yeah one of those times where you could just feel people weren't feeling very um you know still like caught up in what was what had been going happening and not feeling very happy and things like that and um i remember people walking past the mural and seeing them smiling and me buzzing out because I hadn't seen people smile in a long time and um just that that um that was kind of a big reminder of uh, to me um the importance of art and um the feelings that you can especially public art that you can um put out there to people that are um you know just on their everyday walks or I don't know like yeah you hope that they feel something from your work walking past it yeah, that's it. Eh? Um, I remember doing a mural in Highbury and it was one of the first murals at the time. Um, this guy came out of his house across the road and he goes, you know, I've been watching you paint this painting. Fun, it's just like I've got an artwork right in my backyard, you know? It was like, he was so thankful that, and every day people would come and say, thank you for doing this, you know, that, that you're putting this time and effort um, and, and uplifting and for me uh, you know and I can see that in both of your work it is about uplifting and sharing our stories and celebrating who we are as a people and our mural work is so um, you know it's so profound it's so out there it's so um, the stories are being shared straight away and people are connecting uh, and, and I agree with you Miriamma and Poi you would have seen that uh, how it can actually uh, impact the community. Um, so awesome. So, um, hmm, 
what else would you like to share? Um, I know you're full of goodies, you two. Um, <laughs> We we'll go at all sorts of places. We've got another 10 minutes. Uh, anyone, if you'd like to ask some questions, feel free. I'll just see if there's any here. Oh, just lots of awesome um, people loving the cordial. So is there anything else you'd like to share today? Um. What's some uh, interesting things that have happened along the way? Um, but I mean, you talked about painting in the rain. Oh yeah, <laughs> how can that even happen? <laughs> um, well, that's that's the uh, that's probably just with um, especially Muralene and Wellington because the weather is so unpredictable. Um, so with this mural that me and Holly did, um, the forecast for the amount of time that Holly was there was all rain, so we had no option but to paint in the rain. And that's the first time I've painted in the rain. Um, yeah, and I think that's uh, one thing with um, Muralene is you can't control the weather and um, it definitely impacts the mahi. Um, it's not like painting a, yeah, painting a painting inside and you can just, you know, you, you, yeah, you, follow, you follow the weather a lot. I think, I think you kind of, I feel like you kind of get better at reading the weather, maybe. <laughs> well, that's it and when it's hot and sunny too, man, mm. it's just as hard. <laughs> yeah, because it's never that. It's like you want, you kind of want the, um, you want a bit of hot, a bit of cool, like, yeah, but you know, it's kind of luxury to have both. But when you have those times, it's like, mean, mean. <laughs> okay, we've got some questions coming in here. So, Rangi Kipa, um, he was on the episode last week, actually. Uh, he'd like to know where do you both think, uh, the future, what does the future look like in terms of um, either your mahi or um, ngā mahi toi in general, uh, and how your work might speak your idea of the future into being? Um, I think for me personally, um, you know, because there's still options of, oh, Kia ora rangi for that question, uh, awesome partai. Um, yeah, so I think for me, um, for my mahi toy, uh, I think it's just a stepping stone because uh, as you saw from the start of, of my kōrero was going from the transitions from paper to uh, spray paint through to digital um, as um it's showing direction, so I'm moving towards uh, a general direction. So I'll be definitely picking up a chisel soon and um, be having some mahi whakairo, um in the horizon. Um, so that's for me personally, uh, that's the direction. But for for the future, um, I reckon the way that uh, our rangatahi are moving, they, they see um some of our murals in the streets and then they get instantly triggered to go oh look that's right kaha maori and then get them back to back to the art form or back to their their whakapapa and i think that's what um my purpose is anyway for um for mahi toy on the on the murals um to get them thinking in those spaces of a city or um uh, yeah, concrete jungle, just getting them to think about their whakapapa and, um, and those platforms, uh, a painting of a big Māori chief or uh, the corridor of um, the Pūrāko that, that we paint in our murals. Uh, yeah, that's what gets them to drive back towards their tāha Māori. Awesome, Foy. Uh, any thoughts, Miriamma? Um, uh, for me, like, um, looking into the future, um, in terms of my mahi, um, I'm not too sure. I'm never really too sure what I'm up to, um, but I hope to do uh, more public work. Um, yeah, um, and uh, thinking about, yeah, what our, um, for me, I think with, with my mahi, um, one thing that I've, I feel like I've always kind of stuck true with, I, I feel like now, 
um, in the past, I felt quite um, just in different spaces. My mahi was quite, um, has never really um, would fit into sp certain spaces. And um, because um, where I feel like now it's more embraced, like it was quite different to what was happening when I was a bit younger um, at the time where now I feel like um, spaces are being made where um, we're being more, um, it's, it's been more embraced to, um, to, to kind of, to um, contemporary Māori art, I guess, is um, it's so like the things that I was told were too different that you're um, not really doing what everyone everyone here is doing. Um, when now it's like, hey, that's different. Um, you know, we don't have to um, do the things the ways that um, we have in the past. Like, um, I guess it's what I call it is um, me, myself, I call myself a modern Māori. And um, I embrace that um, that's what I create is truly who I am. I am a Māori living in the now. And what does that look like? And I, um, I feel like um, my art shows what that looks like. And um, I hope that maybe encourages other um, Māori to um, I know, delve into that side of themselves as well. Like um, just embrace who you are and um, I think, yeah, with what Poi was saying as well, it's like, um, for me, it's like, you know, don't try, don't try to be like everyone else, be yourself. And we're so lucky to um, have our culture and to, um, to have, um, I don't know if I'm explaining this right, but, um, we're very unique. We're unique. We're unique, and um, it shows, and people notice it. And um, yeah, I think um, that's what makes our art different. I don't know all that. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's um, a great uh, discussion to bring up to Miriamma is about being different mm. and being confident confident in that yeah. difference. Eh? Yeah. And I guess artists um, become artists because they are different, and they kind of come into this okay this is who I am and they're meant to stand out you know whether yeah. they're hiding at home there's something about them standing out so um, I guess now Māori art and Māori artists are, are more in demand because they are different and they bring such a such a strong Aotearoa tanga eh, that you know that you find here in Aotearoa nowhere else um, but also can can share corded on stories that relate across the globe. So mm. um, such a powerful mahi. Um, we do have a couple more questions. Um, we've got a little bit more time. Hemi Takimwana, uh, he'd like to know about the business aspect of things. So how do you quote time versus output quality and when discussing this with a client? Uh, yeah. Um... I get this question quite a lot from other fellow artists and um, basically what I tell them is uh, firstly ask uh, if the client has a budget and because um, this will determine how much money you're going to be doing for them, right? So uh, it's not worth uh, you coming up with a $2,000 design concept and they only had a budget for $100. Um, yeah, so once you establish um, with your client um, what you can work with or how much they can afford or how much they can budget for, um, that will determine and show you exactly um, what design and what sort of mahi you're willing to give for that, um, for that particular um, budget. Um, and, you know, it's, all, it's always... Um, dependent on if it's a government funded um, uh, business or project and um, that's where you can actually have the 
the free reign to ask them um, for more budget if you need to, or um, if it's like a, say a private um, uh, private uh, project for just one offs or for someone else, then you can actually, or for a friend, you can um, play with the uh, how much you're you're wanting to give to as a tonga to your friend or family member. Um, but yeah, first of all, it's always ask them for budget and secure budgets first before uh, moving on to concepts and um, yeah, getting that sorted. Cool. What about you, Miriama? How do you um, kind of work through that process? Um, I feel like I'm still learning, but definitely agree with um, Poi. That's actually one I only just recently learnt. Um, um, it definitely makes it way easier knowing what their budget is. Um, and yeah, definitely, like, I think you have an idea if they have a big, you know, you know, they've got, you know, like they can um, pay your worth kind of thing. Um, I think you get, you just start getting better at, um, um, yeah, knowing how to quote. Um, one thing that I have learned as well, just down here in Pornike is um, because a few of us, you know, there's kind of like a few mural artists, there's groups of us in um, Wellington that do murals, is we um, try to let each other know um, if, because usually we all get asked, um, they um, will get sent out um, on a lot of occasions, get sent out the same email where people are looking for a muralist, but they won't tell you that. Um, so I think it's also um, good. We, we see it as a good thing to um, just um, uh, keep communication open with other artists so that we're all quoting similar rates so no one has been taken advantage of. I think that's quite important with muraline is what I've learnt. Yeah. Yeah, that's so important, isn't it? Is having mm. kind of a standardised. Um, yeah, and to make that? sure, like you don't get, because um, you would get clients uh, at times saying, "Oh, uh, we don't really have a budget. Um, just yeah. tell us how much." And then, um, just really, they wanting you to give them the figure. But if you establish first the budget and um, get those numbers locked in, then uh, it's easier. But if you do get those people that are oh, we don't have a budget, you just give them a, a number that you think is sufficient for you, for your money, your time, um, for the job. And then if they don't either give you a yes or no straight away, like, a, oh, no, that's way too much, or yeah, oh, no, that's perfect. That's That sounds practical, and you go forth from there, and yeah. Yeah, and it's great that, um, you know, as, as business people, you both can openly talk about um, putia and that side of things because you know a lot of artists when they're finding their way as well can be taken advantage of and really it's mm -hmm. about a sustainable practice um, and we shouldn't be fucking ma about um, you know pricing our work and and our time because really people who expect an artist to do something for nothing would they actually give a whole day or a whole week's wages to a kaupapa because pretty much that's mm -hmm. what they're asking for if they want an artist to do something for yeah, that's right. you know, hardly anything. So it's about sustaining the artist so that they can carry on and creating and, um, you know, making these um, beautiful works that are actually moving communities and people. Um, yeah, so thank you for sharing that that quoted also openly. There's just one quickly here, um, Dorothy, because she's from the Taitoke Rau, she has to do, well, not that she has to, but um, she just says here, you both whakapapa to Taitoke Rau. Have you been able to connect through through your mahi toy to landscapes in Te Taitoke Rau? And maybe she's putting that out as a whakaaro for the future too. <laughs> uh, what was the, the the cordial, sorry. Uh, could... She's um, wanting to know if, if or how you have connected back to um, landscapes into Taitokero. Mm, yeah, so um, I was saying before with the, the tihati that uh, brought out with Hine Haurua, um talking about um, the the toka that has the Pohutukawa tree on it up in Te Reringa 
and giving that a puraka and um, it's all about yeah, it's getting people uh, to think outside the square, um, giving it a personification of like it is a living thing, um, and it's my perspective. So uh, yeah, that that pretty much is what um, something from up far north. Uh, what I've done in the past, and um, I I plan to make some more tiati about. Um, uh, landmarks and uh, create kūrāko for certain places like, um, or oh, here, here's one coming up, was uh, something to do with uh, uh, our waharo off our marae, so yeah, stay tuned for that one. Awesome, she's just got at the bottom here too, um, apart <clears throat> from kākahu as well, so anything extended? Oh yeah, 100%, like um, still have um, Got plans to do some neural mahi up um, kai tai and up um, whangarei. Um, and definitely it's all about sharing the puraka of that rohe. And uh, if there is no uh, significant puraka, but there always is a puraka there. Um, and if it's too tapu, then I'll just make a puraka that aligns with that. Um, with that story without breaking any tapu and um, any red tapes getting crossed. Um, but yeah, definitely the, that's in the pipeline as well to do some more mahi. I know my the next uh, uh, mural up, uh, Ngāti Hine, will be uh, in my farikai. <laughs> so Te Reto Marae um, will definitely be uh, installing a uh, mural inside there for our, our whanaunga to look at. Awesome. Wicked. There you go, Dot. Poise coming your way. I know it's far away, but uh <laughs> the hooky gets I, I, I would love to. Um I, I'm usually up there every year up at our um Alfano. We have a batch up in um um Whangaruru. Uh, um, I'd say, yeah, a lot of my paintings actually um go back to our whenua. Um I used to put, we have a Pahutakawa tree that goes down into the water and then the tide comes in right um, where our batch is. Um, and that Pahutakawa used to be in all my paintings. Um, but I would love, I would love to, um, yeah, do a mural up there, definitely. That I definitely will try, will try um set that in the pipeline. Sure, I'm sure, sure it'll be achievable. <laughs> awesome. Maybe Doc can help, help make that happen. We just have one quick um, question before we round off. So Rock Arts asks, for tomorrow's mahi toy worker, how did you get past the unsure feelings of your place? And did you always know what was what that this was your path? Did you always know this was your path? Um, yeah, well, that's, that's all part of the, the hiding that you go on as a, as an artist, eh? you, um, you're you not quite sure uh, where you're going with it. and But all you, you need to know is if it feels right with you. Um, all my, my uh, kaumatu and, uh, up far north in, in, in Tangri, uh, they they were kai for kairo, they were um, building our whirinui. And um, I see it as, for me, being a more modern kai for kairo. <laughs> Uh, instead of chisels, I've got spray paints and um, uh, different sort of platforms in the city instead of uh, on our papakainga. But um, yeah, it, it's always 